Okay, so get ready to put your math skills to work to solve this interesting little basic math word problem. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and read the problem. A train goes 12 miles in 18 minutes. How fast is the train going? All right, so feel free to use a calculator, but if you can figure this out, we'll go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second, then of course we'll walk through exactly how to solve this problem step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, well, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so one more time, the question is, a train is going, uh, goes 12 miles in 18 minutes. How fast is the train going? In other words, what is the speed of the train? Okay, so let's go to take a look at the answer. The correct answer is 40 miles per hour. Now, if you got this right, well, you definitely get an A+, 100%, a happy face, and a certificate of excellent, uh, excellence for being a certified professional expert in the area of solving rate, time, and distance problems. Now, this is a very, very common type of math problem, and if you had a tough time uh, with this, well, I'm glad that you found this video because you're going to learn a thing or two, and if you are a math student, you definitely need to know how to solve these type of problems. But the good news is they are pretty easy, so let's go and get into it right now. All right, so first things first. First, we have a lovely uh, math uh, word problem, and you always want to use the rule of three when you solve any math word problem, and that is read the problem at least three times. Now, this uh, particular problem is pretty straightforward, but you got to be careful. Even with simple problems, you can, you know, oftentimes go too fast and then get confused, okay? You definitely don't want to confuse the information. So, you know, read the problem more than once, and then what you want to do is try to model this situation. So we have this train, it covers 12 miles in 18 minutes, so how fast is the train going? Now a good idea to um, solve any problem is just to kind of model the situation. Oftentimes visualizing the problem can help you see the solution. So let's go ahead and take a look at a little sketch of the problem. So, uh, you know, this gives us a chance to use our basic art skills as well. So here is our train. It goes 12 miles in 18 minutes. And the question is, how fast is it going? I.e., what is the speed of the train? So let's think about this for a second. What do you think uh, should be our units of measure for the speed of the train? Okay, so should it be uh, maybe meters per second or maybe uh, kilometers per hour? or maybe like uh, miles per hour, right? Maybe that sounds pretty good. Now, of course, if you are in a, a non-US country where, there, where you use the metric system, you might uh, prefer something like a kilometer per hour or some other units of measure, but we are dealing with miles, so we're definitely not in the metric system, and we are dealing with minutes. So we probably want to have the speed of this train expressed in terms of miles per hour. And of course, you saw the solution, is 40 miles per hour. So we need to keep this in mind. Units of measure are critical when solving any math problem, right? Especially, obviously, when you have, you know, area problems, volume problems, speed problems, doesn't make a difference. If there's units involved, you gotta be very aware of this. But we can't solve this particular problem unless we can re uh, relate uh, distance, time, and speed. And I'm going to show you a uh, formula right now that this is uh, really one of these type of formulas that you need to store away in your long-term memory. Okay, so here it is. As a matter of fact, I'll go ahead and tell you what it uh, stands for. R times T is equal to D. So we're talking about rate times time is equal to distance. Now, I'm gonna give you a little bit of a hint here. I'm gonna give you a chance to figure this thing out. So if you forgot the formula, well, here it is. Rate times time is equal to distance. And here is the problem. We just basically, you know, visualized it. So why don't you see if you can plug in this information to figure out the speed of the train. All right, so again, rate times time is equal to distance. Let's go ahead and take a look at the setup. Okay, so what do you think? Rate times time is equal to distance. So we're looking for the what? Well, rate is another word for speed. 
Another word uh, also uh, that comes into uh, mind or comes to mind is velocity, right? So like velocity, speed, you know, rate, okay? These are all, you know, well, there's technical differences, you know, for those of you that understand vectors and whatnot, but we don't need to get overly complex. But if we're talking about the speed of something, we are talking about the rate. Okay, so the rate is what we're looking for, right? We're looking for the speed of the train. Now, we do have the time of the train, okay, and the distance. So this uh, train covered 12 miles in 18 minutes. So what do you think? You think this is a pretty good setup? Well, uh, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. Now, if it's good, uh, tell me why it's good. If it's bad, tell me why it's bad. Now, if you said, hey, Mr. YouTube, math man, this is not good, well, you would be absolutely correct. Matter of fact, I gotta give you another happy face and another little bonus A plus. This is wrong because our time, okay, is in minutes. Now, it's not technically wrong uh, to do this, but we want to express our rate in terms of miles per hour. So this is not a good approach to do this, okay? So uh, if you use this approach, well, then you're gonna give, you're gonna end up with a different unit of measure. So when you have a problem, oftentimes the problem will say express your answer in you know, a particular unit of measure, but try to use the most logical unit of measure. Of course, the speed of this train should be like in miles per hour. But uh, this is an incorrect setup because here we are dealing with minutes, okay? We need hours, not minutes. So let's go back real quick and review the setup for rate times times equal to distance. So in any particular um, unit of measure, okay, it could be meters per second. Well, a matter of fact, let's take that real quick. Meters per second, okay? So this is a speed. So the distance is in meters. So here, if we had a problem, we'd have to make sure that this unit of measure is in meters and this uh, our time would have to be in seconds then our rate would be in meters per second okay so let's uh, kind of review this in terms of miles per hour okay so we have miles now we have uh, mp h miles per hour but really you can think of that as this miles per hour okay so our distance is what in miles so our unit of measure needs to be in time and our rate, our speed will be in miles per hour. So what we need to do, uh, what we need to do here is convert those 18 minutes into hours. So how do we do that? Well, pretty straightforward. Now a lot of you could probably say, well, you just take 18 divided by 60 minutes, 18 minutes divided by 60 minutes. You would you would be correct, but really technically what's going on is you're multiplying this time by a conversion factor. So we have one hour to 60 minutes. Okay, also 60 minutes to one. Uh, hour, but you got to make sure you use the correct conversion factor, okay? Because when you multiply across here, 18 minutes times one hour over 60 minutes, the units of measure of um, minutes cross cancel, and we're left with hours. Okay, so I'm covering a lot of things here that some of you might be, you know, struggling with. If you need help with um, this level of mathematics, I'm going to give you some suggestions here in a second, okay? But hopefully you know how to convert units of measure. So that's why here, if you're confused, oh, I'm going to use 60 minutes to one uh, hour, that would be incorrect because we'd have minutes times minutes or minutes squared. Got to make sure that your, your uh, units of measure that you're trying to get rid of, i.e. here, we're trying to get rid of minutes to get to hours. So they have to cross cancel. All right, so we end up with 18 over 60, this lovely fraction. Of course, six goes into 18, three, and six goes into 60, 10. So uh, 18 minutes is three tenths of an hour. Okay, so now we are ready to go ahead and plug this into our lovely formula, rate times time is equal to distance. Uh, we're not gonna use 18 minutes, we're gonna use three tenths of an hour. Okay, so now we have our time an hour, our distance is in miles, so when we solve for the rate, it will be in miles per hour. Okay, so this should be pretty straightforward, so let's go ahead and take the next step and solve three tenths times r is equal to 12. Now, this might be a little bit confusing for you got R times three tenths is equal to 12, but uh, you know, order and multiplication doesn't make a difference. So we can write the coefficient or the number like this. We have three tenths times R is equal to 12. All right, so let's go ahead and solve this basic algebra equation. But first, I need you to quickly go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Don't you just like the way I kind of sneak this in? Well, I wouldn't stop uh, each one of my videos more or less. Uh, if it wasn't that important, you know, for me to continue to keep um, producing videos on YouTube, which I love to do, I need to get um, 
support from the, you know, basically people who watch my videos. So if I'm delivering some sort of a little value, okay, or big value, if you're like, yes, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I appreciate what you do. Well, the best way you can help me out is to hit that subscribe button. Now, why would you want to help me out? Well, you know, uh, maybe you might be saying, well, you might be an okay guy. Well, yeah, I like to believe so. But really, what you're doing is help me reach other people that could benefit from this instruction. Okay, so that's the whole idea here. So just hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell as well so you get my latest videos. All right, so let's go ahead and finish this up. We have three. Three tenths R is equal to 12. So to solve for R, all we need to do is multiply uh, both sides of the equation by the reciprocal. Okay, so this is the easiest way to solve uh, basic fraction equations. So if the coefficient is a fraction, the best way to solve these type of equations, again, is to flip this upside down. That's called the reciprocal. So we have 10 thirds times 3 tenths. So when we multiply these fractions, 10 times 3 is 30 over 3 times 10 is 30. 30 over 30 is 1, right? So 1 or 1 R or R. But if we multiply this side of the equation by uh, 10 thirds, remember the basic rule in algebra is you have to multiply the other side as well. Whatever you do to one side of an equation, you have to do to the other. So we have 12 times 10 over 3. So 10 over 3 uh, times 12, 3 goes into 12, 4. 4 times uh, 10 is 40. So our rate is 40 miles per hour. Okay, so if you need additional help with anything that I covered in this video, well, let me give you a few suggestions. One, I have a ton of videos on my YouTube channel, and I made all those videos for you, okay? So basically, I cover everything from basic math to advanced math, like calculus, and of course, everything in between. But uh, what we're talking about here is kind of like basic algebra. And one thing is for sure, you're definitely gonna see a lot of problems that involve rate times time equal to distance, this particular formula. You need to definitely master how to work with this formula and how to work with units of measure. So uh, if you need full instruction or if you want to see kind of like my best, most comprehensive work, well then check out my full main math courses. You'll find links to those in the description of this video. But uh, with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.